I'm Tamsin Edwards and I'm a climate scientist. I'm a physicist and I did my undergraduate degree at Manchester. So the first time I came to Jodrell Bank, I was actually doing an experiment here. I was very lucky to use one of the telescopes and we were studying the Crab Pulsar, so the Pulsar in the Crab Nebula. And we came twice a week for a term and we, we sat and we watched the telescope and the data coming in and we analyzed it. It was incredible. I completely fell in love with the place, not just the physics, but the piece of the place and the history as well. I probably first started really looking at the night sky when I was about 16 or 17 and I learned all the constellations. I remember wandering the streets, kind of tripping over things, trying to work out what everything was. And at the same time I was learning about um, astrophysics, about black holes and, you know, trying to understand little bits of quantum mechanics as well. And, and I'd, I'd really fallen in love with the physics, so when I look at the night sky, I think of that, that first time of really falling in love with, with physics when I was a teenager. I mean, Jodrell's just part of our culture, isn't it? It's part of our history. You know, you go past on the trains and the roads and you, and you look out for the dish in the distance. Oh, can you spot Jodrell? People, maybe you haven't even been here that much, see it as a really iconic um, uh, telescope, uh, as, a, as, a, as a real sort of marker point in our history and our landscape. So, it, you know, it's got huge numbers of memories, I think, for people, whether they've really come and studied all the science or if they've just seen it at a distance to kind of think, oh, what, you know, what's it looking at? You know, what's it looking for? Uh, so it's incredibly important. Uh, I have to admit, space travel makes me think of my partner, Dallas Campbell, because he has been doing a ton of interesting stuff around space science and human space flight this year, uh, around the Apollo 50th anniversary. And um, I've learned a lot from him about the, the wonder and the curiosity uh, that go into those missions and the history. I think as a as a physicist, you know, I'm always interested in sort of, you know, hearing the latest discoveries and technology, but just as a human, you know, we all have that, that desire to imagine what other worlds could be like and what other futures could be like, um, whether it's science fiction or dreams or conversations. Um, so yeah, it's, it makes me think of, I guess, everyone else looking up at the sky, thinking about the future, thinking about Mars, uh, thinking about about their favourite science fiction programmes and books as well. Um, yeah, it's just um, what makes us human. I really love Blue Dot. It's about putting science into culture. One of the things I love when I come here and give a talk is that people say they came for the music and they've never been to a science talk before, but they they just wandered in or they just thought something sounded interesting and and they loved it and and that was their first science talk. So that's really special, the bringing together of different passions and different beautiful ideas um, and inspirations of, of humanity altogether. You know whether it's the moon installation, the lights, the, uh, the music sort of installations, beaming music up at the moon, bringing it all together. There's nothing like that, I think, anywhere else in quite the same way. My talk is called Polar Thinking. And it's about, it's a pun on the, the fact that I do polar science, but it's about the idea that we shouldn't fall too much into polarization and black and white thinking. Um, I, I talk about climate science and how it works and, and my own research, but also the kind of overarching theme is not to be too simplistic, not to be too tribal, them and us, and, and just to think carefully about the nuance of things. You know, is the truth somewhere on a spectrum? Is, is the truth maybe two sort of slightly contradictory things at once that we've got to keep in mind at once until we know what's really happening. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a plea for thinking carefully about the world. Well, where could you be but Blue Dot for the anniversary of the Apollo um, moon landings? I, I love seeing 
not only the way that the different installations and um, you know the different acts and the different music and everything is linking together but I love the people that come and dress up you know I've seen some incredible uh, spacesuits engineering you know lit lighting up helmets um, aliens and uh, so I think that that it's really developing its own or has developed its own kind of feeling and culture so that uh, if there's any way you'd want to be for the Apollo landings it would be the Blue Dot Festival at Jodrell Bank. I was really happy to see Jarvis Cocker. I was a Pulp fan 25 years ago. Uh, really, really excited, but lots of other amazing bands here as well. I hope that people can feel at the same time both urgency and optimism about the future. I think it's important to stay optimistic that we can make changes to make the planet better, whether it's climate change, the environment, pollution, biodiversity, energy, all of these big challenges. We've got poverty, water, inequality. Um, we've got to stay optimistic while still feeling urgent about it. I think that's something that I'm really trying to figure out how to, to keep in mind at the same time with people. We have to be... Um, uh, quick and push hard, but not be uh, demoralised at the same time. It would be a message of love, because what else would you send to the moon?